God bless everyone. Sammy D here. This time I'm walking and talking with Jesus on Show Road. The sun is out. It's a better day than the last few days that we had. So I decided to come out and do my exercise. And I want to do a video here. And I want to share with you briefly from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. It says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who call bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Yeah, I never heard that verse. Look it up, Isaiah 5.20. First Timothy picked it up and he talks about, Whoa, in the last days, there'll be men that are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, that'll look towards the darkness and call it light, and evil and call it good. That's happening today. And I want to... Sound the alarm. I want to blow the trumpet in Zion and tell America and the churches of America to wake up and shake your legs. Get to moving because you're stuck. In today's generation, we look at things that are evil and we call it good. I was just watching an interview on YouTube about a man that was a kingpin, a gangster in the 60s and 70s, African American in Harlem. He brought drugs there and he took over the whole neighborhood by selling heroin. And they made a movie of him and they made a documentary and they were glorifying him like he was a hero, like he was doing something good in the community. He was selling drugs, poison to kids, people. And what drugs do is, first of all, they take away your health, your family is destroyed. Your freedom, you commit a crime, you go to prison. Ultimately, you die. And they glorified this man that was selling drugs because he found a way to export them and bring them into the country for years illegally and got away with it. And then he spoke and he said, well, uh, you know, I did some good things. I, I made a, I put a McDonald in the neighborhood. I uh, sent some kids to college. I helped the women sometimes that were without a husband pay their rent. You did that with blood money. First of all, putting a McDonald's in a neighborhood is not a the best thing in the world. It's not the best idea. McDonald's is fast food. It's junk food, in my opinion. Probably you eat that every day. You go to breakfast at McDonald's. But that's fast food, junk food. And ultimately, it will destroy you. Uh, that's how we get people to become obesity and overweight and get sugar diabetes and other uh, heart conditions and high blood pressure. So you put a McDonald's there, you're not doing anything big. You're not doing anything slick. And if you're paying for people to send their kids to college, that's blood money. You made it from stealing. You were a thug and hurting people, having people killed. And they glorified this guy. That's what gets to me. Now the pastor down the block that down the block that has a church and he's preaching the gospel and he's trying to get kids off drugs and kids off the streets and kids to come to God and finish school, they don't recognize him. They bypass him. The gangster is the one that gets the publicity. That's calling evil good. I read where they were doing now a museum. Check this out. A museum for 
Charles Manson. The books he wrote or the things he kept in his cell block and when he committed the crimes, uh, the history of that, a museum. Can you imagine that? For this murdering, conniving, demon-possessed individual. They call that light when it's darkness. And throughout our nation and throughout the country and perhaps in your neighborhood, in our community, we see many people that are doing evil things and we call it good. You see a drunken in the corner with a bottle of liquor and we call that being cool. You see a young man with his Bible going to church and we call him a fool. America needs to get their values in order. The churches need to get themselves together because we're allowing a lot of that stuff to come into the church. We got people with all kinds of stuff that they bring from the world and we embrace them. We put them up in the pulpit. We let them sing to us when last night they were hanging out in a club. We allow the bitter things to become sweet. And the sweet things we call bitter. Well, Jesus said it this way. He says that man loved darkness rather than the light. The nature of man after Adam fell is to be drawn to be attracted to darkness. I have an attitude with that. Because when Jesus comes into your heart, when he comes into your life, we now take on the nature of God. And God's nature is light, love, goodness. We may have some struggles because it's a process. The Holy Spirit is working in us. We may have some issues still and we're dragging stuff from the past. And when they came out of Egypt, uh, God had to put them in the desert so he can bring Egypt out of them. Sometimes we have issues. We have stuff. I know in my life I've had my own struggles, my own battles with stuff from my past. And I had to deal with it so I can get rid of it uh, through the spirit of the living God and through the power and the enlightenment of the word of God. We struggle. It's a process, but at least the desire is there to do good. The desire is there to go forward. The determination is there to complete the, the work God put in your hands. Uh, uh, the desire and determination and the destiny to fulfill God's will and to obey the spirit of God is there. But here in America, we've lost that. We don't fear God anymore. Kids don't, feel, don't fear authority anymore. They don't fear their parents. They don't fear the teachers in school, the police. They don't fear God or anyone, God's people. And on the other hand, we have the politicians that are crooked. Police officers that are brutal. We have some even clergy people that are crooks, stealing and taking money from the people and putting it in their pockets. So we have our values mixed up. And I'm here to rebuke America. And I'm here to rebuke any Christian, any believer that's living a lie, that's living a double life, uh, that's doing things that are wrong and have no intentions of repenting and of forsaking their sin. You see, some of us sin because we're weak and others sin because we're wicked. If you're weak, you seek God and God will strengthen you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God will transform you. God will strengthen you. Now, if you're wicked and you've discovered a way to make money and a plan and you have a scheme and a scandal and you have a gimmick, then that's wicked. And that's the people that call the bad things good and the good things bad. 
My message to those gangsters, my message to any of those thugs, uh, whether you're black or white or Italian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Cuban, or any other nationality, is repent and come to Jesus. If you really want to be a gangster, get on God's side and fight against the devil that's using you and he's the real pimp. Because he's pimping you out. If you call yourself bad and you say you're a gangster and you're a tough guy, why don't you come to Jesus? Only real men serve the Lord and then surrender your life to him and let him use you to fight against not people but against principalities and powers in high places that are destroying this world. And let me give you a warning, Mr. A man that is drug dealing and cartelling drugs back and forth, uh, whether you're at Chabe or, or Frank Lucas or John Gotti or so any of those thugs, uh, let me give you a warning. If you don't repent and come to the feet of Jesus, sooner or later, you got to pay the pipe piper. His name is Satan. He's playing the pipe and you're dancing to his tune and everybody must pay. Sooner or later, he's going to ask you for what uh, you owe him and you're going to have to pay that debt and that debt is with your eternal soul all the money in the world can't bail you out can't buy you out all the money in the world can't do anything for you when it comes times to meeting your maker the bible says we must all appear before the judgment seat of god so that we can be judged and when god judges you and he sends you down to hell or you send yourself down to hell then you'll have to meet your master the one you've been following satan himself and he's going to require an act of you see if you can pimp your way out of that one so i'm frustrated with this i read that i said you gotta be crazy making a museum out of this guy charles manson they should bury him and leave him alone and forget about him make a museum about people that are doing good things in the mission fields we had pastors and missionaries and people that are serving God and helping people. Do a museum about them. Our churches and the community preaching the gospel about people that are good. But we have it all twisted. We're in the middle of a jungle. We're in the middle of a desert. The Bible says that Satan is the prince of the air. And I rebuke him in the name of Jesus and any of his followers and any of his demons. And I come against them because the weapons of our warfare and our carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So my friend, I'll leave you with this. If you're a Christian, if you love Jesus, if you're following Jesus, if you know Jesus, if you want to know him better and more, as the apostle Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, Listen to me, get into the word of God and make sure that you call those things that are evil, evil. And those things that are good, good. Don't mix them up, even in the church. Uh, if I had a church, there's some things I would not allow. I have the worship team go up there and like most churches, they play. And they perform because it's a performance, it's kind of uh, entertainment, and then they leave. They just go somewhere else. I would fire them. I tell you, you got to step down, my brother, my sister. You cannot come here in this church and worship God and lead the people to worship. And then you step in out. You got to sit down and hear the word of God. And you got to come in early so you can get prayed up. I'm tired of people coming in late to the worship team and they're looking for notes. What are we going to sing? What are we going to play? Haven't you been? rehearsing haven't you been praying haven't you been worshiping the lord doesn't god put a song in your heart the bible says sing a new song unto the lord and you're looking on your notes uh, for a song that you want to sing listen you need to sit down this is not your thing i'm looking for worshipers not just people that entertain not just because you have a voice and you can teach angels how to sing i'm looking for people that have a heart to worship god that have a heart to love god that have a heart for god's people to come into the presence of god so if you're coming into to a church that God put me in charge of you need to sit down you need to go back to the old drawing board and get right with God and get back to your first love 
And if you're a pastor and if you're a preacher and you have not been preparing a message and looking for a word that God gave you for your people and you don't have a concern for your people, you may need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Bring a fresh, fresh word. And if you're really called to be a pastor, you need to have a concern for the people of God. If you read the book of Haggai, Haggai, it's not a hamburger, look it up. Haggai, one of the minor prophets, God told them, listen, you, you're too concerned about your own things, your own house. And you're abandoning and forsaking and neglecting the house of prayer, God's house. If you're a pastor and you don't have no interest in your people and you're not concerned about what's going on in the midst of your congregation, who needs help, who needs counseling, who needs financial support, and you don't care about that because you just care about preaching and then getting an offering, you need to check yourself, man. You're, more, you're, too, you're too concerned about your own house. And your priority should be God's house. So come in there and seek the Lord. If you got, if you're a leader, man, seek God's face, cause God, God wants you to lead His people. I saw this one time, and I'll finish. One pastor had a mega church. He had some buckets out there for the offering, big long barrels. And he asked for an offering. He said, "Bring the offering to the Lord." Tithes and offering. People came up and they filled them all up. A few of them, five, seven of them. They all got filled up to the brim. And then he says, anybody in the congregation that has an outstanding bill, could be your mortgage, your rent, your light, gas, your car loan, or car note, any bill, come up here and take it from this basket. Help yourself to it. You ain't never heard that one, right? Can you imagine your church doing that? No way. Go pull out guns before you come up. Hey, move back. You got the bodyguards, supposed to be armor bearers. Yeah, leave the money alone. But this pastor said, come on up here, take whatever you need to pay your bill. Some people came up, a few. You can tell it was a wealthy church. Most people didn't need it. Some did. They came up, took some, they were honest, they took what they needed. But that's what the church is for. You collect offerings and tithes, pay the bills, pay your staff, pay money to help your people. What if the sister cucumber can't pay her rent? Go to the church. Hey, sister, pay your rent. You don't do this all the time, but you should have a, a side budget for that. Pay your car bill. Anyway, check yourself. Don't call good things bad things and don't call bad things good things or bitter things sweet things. Stay focused. Clean up your act. God told the children of Israel, get your house in order. Put your house in order. Check yourself. The last few days I've been doing nothing but praying and seeking God's faith. And God's been dealing with me. He's been sanctifying me. He's been telling me, Sam, there's some things that I'm not happy with. And I'm letting go and I'm changing those areas. And my attitude, my focus, my uh, thinking. And I thank God that we don't do this overnight. It's a process. Uh, and we haven't obtained. We haven't got there yet. But we're working and walking towards it. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray this message touches somebody's heart and I hope it goes viral and everybody hears it all the gangsters out there and they, they yeah I said it Sammy D from Brooklyn I'm checking you man repent come to Jesus and I ain't afraid of nobody God's got my back not a gangster not a thug not a bodyguard God has my back you can get through him then you got me you got to get through him first. <laughs> I don't think you could, so I ain't worried. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You all take care now. Mm -mm 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 -mm.